Elder Scrolls Online is an MMO that got off to a rather rocky start when it launched about three years ago. Look up any original review and you'll find a bad game, an insult to the Elder Scrolls series that you should never touch. A lot can change in three years though. If you aren't familiar, Elder Scrolls Online is an MMORPG that takes place in the Elder Scrolls universe a few hundred years before the third game in the series, Morrowind. In a world where three factions fight each other constantly, each one made up of three different races, you'll find yourself solving quests, doing dungeons, PvP, and just about anything else you would expect from this genre. The gameplay of ESO is very interesting for an MMO. There are action-based basic attacks that stay true to the Elder Scrolls series, combined with skills that you can stick on a rather limited hotbar for five regular skills and one ultimate ability. So long as you don't play the game in first person, then the gameplay is definitely a positive factor. The game was designed for third person with the way its camera works and the indicators that warn you about certain attacks being outside of the first person mode's field of view. I love first person in like every game, but I'm sorry to say that if you play this game in first person, you're going to have to deal with a handicapped gameplay experience. Subpar animations. Yes, first person has different animations. And difficulty with spatial awareness. In third person though, this game really shines. Each class can use any combination of different skills that adds fun and variety to the ability to mix and experiment to create a build that works for you. And so long as you don't touch PvP, then there's a lot of viable builds out there for you to explore. My biggest complaint gameplay wise is with the crafting. Crafting is designed in a way that you have to research traits for weapons and armor and gather designs for different appearances for them. The researching alone is set up in such a way that it will take you 200 and 38 real-time days to acquire every possible trait for weapons and armor. And that is if you are consistently on top of setting up new research and have already progressed in your crafting skill trees. That's a little ridiculous to me, and since you need to do that on every character or designate one specific character for crafting, it's a turnoff from the crafting system entirely. Otherwise, this game offers a lot of content. It took me months to complete everything ESO had to offer. The dungeons are very unique compared to other MMOs dungeons. They feel notably harder. It's like the game stresses teamwork and communication and punishes you for a lack of organization more than any other MMORPG I've ever played. PvP is another thing that requires organization. I found that as a solo player, your PvP experience could be not so good unless all you wanted to do was run around killing the random persons you find. You need a group to really be able to push any objectives in the three-side free-for-all castle sieging mess that is Cyrodiil. Questing in the Elder Scrolls Online is better than questing in any other Elder Scrolls game I've ever played. And to clarify, I've played Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim the second being my favorite in the entire series. ESO's questing features more choices with more meaningful impacts than any other title in the series. It brings you to more lands than every other game combined and features characters that are far more memorable. Even better, it's all voice acted. There isn't one line of dialogue in this entire game that I could find that isn't voice acted, and that's amazing for an MMO. Every quest dialogue, every miscellaneous dialogue, every single line of dialogue in the entire game, and there's a lot of dialogue, is voice acted. Of course, there aren't enough voice actors. There's never enough. But there's more than there were in any other Elder Scrolls game. Some of these quests will tug at your heartstrings, others will have you laughing your ass off, but most importantly, there will be at least a few that you simply cannot forget. This game does not lead you to quests though, beware. 
It's an open Tamriel, and they reward your exploration of its vast lands with quests and other loot. If you are not one for exploring, it's likely you'll never complete every quest the game has to offer, especially some of the more hilarious side quests. The graphics of this game are understandably subpar. Being that its official release was in 2014, I would expect better, but being that it is an MMO, it makes sense why it isn't. MMOs are not known for their graphics with the exception of Black Desert. However, if there's one thing I can praise about ESO's graphics, it's that it doesn't suffer from the same poppin' issues many other MMORPGs do, with characters and NPCs popping in from 30 feet away from you as severely. Even with max view distance, there's definitely something left to be desired. Fences certainly love to pop in 10 feet in front of your face, small trees included. And with the game's lack of and continuously degrading optimization, you're going to need a very good computer to maintain a maximum view distance in this game. And in some cities, 60 frames per second just is not possible unless you stand at the edge of the city and stare out into the ocean rather than at the city itself, aka Riften. The sounds, special effects, and music are all perfect for this game, I have no complaints other than that I really hate the bards, but other than that I don't really have any particular praises, it's alright. Housing is a great yet buggy recent addition to the game that definitely needs some work but offers plenty to do for role players and anyone who likes to customize their own domain, including guilds setting up their own guild halls. Overall, Elder Scrolls Online is a great MMO that any fan of the series should definitely buy. The base game alone at $30 can provide hundreds of hours of fun easily, and has already provided me with approaching 2,000 hours with all currently available DLCs except Shadows of the Hist. ESO earns an 8 out of 10 from me. Everything that's good about it is amazing. But with the lack of optimization, glitches that are never getting fixed, and how the servers always break every time a new bit of content comes out, it loses a couple of points. If I felt I could add points for the community, I would make it a 9 out of 10, easily, because this game has one of the best communities I've ever experienced in an MMO, as long as you avoid zone chat. It's a fun game with a lot to do, and it's such a cheap price, why not pick it up today? And I'll see you guys on the next one.